Okay, I'm playing Pokemon Crystal. It's been a while. Um, we're going to do this thing for this round of episodes where we talk about the new Aphex Twin EP, the Collapse EP. But first I got to complain about something, which is, there's that one episode of Spongebob where Squidward is like, are you guys here to ruin my day? And then Patrick's like, is it time already to ruin Squid's day? And he calls him Squid. And they never call him Squid after that. Is that his nickname? It, it haunts me, because in the rest of that show, they never call him Squid. And he doesn't call him Sponge, or Pat. His name's not Rick. I don't know. It's a whole thing. But uh, I guess I should talk about this Aphex Twin thing. So Aphex Twin put out this new EP called The Collapse EP. And... Me, Michael, and Christian are all going to listen to it, and we're going to talk about it. I've listened to it a couple times now. And, uh... It occupies this weird spot in my Aphex Twin fandom, because I do like Aphex Twin a ton. He was very influential on my musical taste when I was, like, 13, 14. Um, I listened to selected Ambient Works 85 to 92 or whatever, like, every day when I was that age. And I used to roll around in my beat-up old minivan and listen to that album with the bass turned all the way up. And my sister was always like, what are we, what are we listening to here? I'd say, it's selected Ambient Works 85 to 92 by Aphex Twin. She didn't get it. But, uh, um, yeah, I have a ton of love for all of those early Aphex Twin albums, especially selected Ambient Works 2 which is, it was like one of my holy grails on vinyl, and I finally got it on vinyl. There's no PP left. Sick. Um, and that's like one of my favorite albums of all time. And then he kind of disappeared. And I mean, his last like major statement was Drux, which is, I think, a good album. I know that's kind of a contentious one. Uh, a lot of people don't like how well, all over the map it is. A lot of people just listen to Avril 14 and they're like, this is fine. And that's a really pretty song, but the rest of the album is not like that at all. Is there like a way to restore PP? Pee -pee? Restore PP. Pee -pee. Guess not. I'm switching him for Willestein. So anyway, he has this like fantastic career and some of my favorite albums and EPs of all time, like the On EP, that title track on that is one of my all time favorite songs. And then he disappears for a while and then he comes back with Cyro. And a lot of people love Cyro, but I can't get into it because to me it feels like that scene in um god what is it called <laughs> uh it's been a really 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 long couple days here anyways the one where he turns it up to 11 and he's just sitting in his room full of guitars and he's like sustain on this guitar can go for days and I just picture Richard D. James just in his room full of synthesizers and he's got tapes and tapes and tapes and tapes and tapes of um, songs he's written and that's what he is that's what his career consists of now I feel like is just I made all these songs and here you go, here's a collection of 10 of them, and that's an album. And that's what I feel like Cyro was. And a lot of people were like, this is awesome. I thought it was kind of all over the place, and it doesn't really have that human element that I feel like characterizes a lot of his best work early on. Um, his, his first, like, five albums have this really weird, rural, odd quality to them that is very human uh, 
compared to something like Square Pusher or something. Well, maybe not Square Pusher, but like... It's closer to the Boards of Canada end of the spectrum than I think most people could give either group credit for. But with Cyro and this new EP, I feel like a lot of that is gone and it's just a lot of experimentation with... Um, I will go... Maybe I can make this fit. Nope. Nope, not gonna fit. Not gonna fit. That works. Okay. Um... There was a... I don't know, just like Richard D. James' album has a ton of songs that are very childlike and they have this sense of weird kind of wonder to them. And I feel like a lot of that is gone now. And what you get is a lot of um, the same type of drum programming you probably expect from Aphex Twin, a lot of the same vocal manipulation you might expect. And I don't feel like there's a spark to it because I feel like so many other electronic music producers have stepped up in the last, you know, 30 years and just do a lot of this stuff better. And I feel like Aphex Twin is in this weird position where he is classic rock band circa way too late into the 70s, but people are still giving him accolades because he's this legendary figure. And I feel like we're past his prime by a lot. And I'm still happy when... He puts out music. I think the music video for the first song on this EP is incredible in the way that most Apex Twin videos are incredible. Sick. Sick. I'm just gonna switch Pokemon. To... Plant. To Flyboy. Good. Ugh. So ultimately, I just come across kind of disappointed with this. I mean, it's fine. It's exactly what you would expect from Apex Twin circa 2018. Um, which means it's good music. But it's not exciting. It's not... It's not the kind of music where if he had put this out when I was 13 or whatever, I wouldn't be like, Oh, this has changed my entire outlook on music just because it just sounds like other music now. Sick. I don't remember how to get out of this cave. And I just wish he would maybe go back to ambient music because I feel like he is incredibly good at making ambient music and it seems like that's not what we're gonna get. We're just gonna get you know, grab bags of drum programming with weird synth programming on top of it. And there are worse things in the world, but it's not so interesting. That's my sync point so I can sync this episode's audio to the video because I don't do them together. I like to put funny reverb on my voice. Hello. Yes. Of course. I don't know. I get the sense that... He doesn't really know what to do either. I don't know if he's interested in making, like, big artistic statements, like... Drux or Selected Ambient Works 2 or any of his albums because it just doesn't seem like... Like, Cyro... I don't even know really what its aesthetic was, which is weird to say, I guess, but for me, a lot of... A lot of the listening experience of an album is this whole package, and Cyro, to me, just felt like it was cobbled together from other stuff and had no real personality to it. 
those songs just felt like they were sitting on a hard drive and he served them up. Um, that's why I kind of like that Cheetah EP because it was a very specific instrument he was using. And it had this cohesion to it because he kind of had this self-imposed limitation. And I don't think the music was fantastic or anything, but it was interesting. Because I think him without a challenge is just him being good at making Aphex Twin music. And I don't know if there's a need for that really right now. Which is a dumb thing to say, of course, because then there's people who really like this CP and they're like, well, there's obviously a need for it because I like it. So I retract that statement. But, uh... Speaking of uh, self-imposed limitations, there's uh, this electronic group that has the guy from Pinback and one other guy, and they use this crazy, like, early sampling technology that, like, IBM or something sold, and they just make albums out of these crazy loops and stuff. But they make, like, actual songs, and I wish I could remember what it's called, but it's, it's out there, and they just put out an album this year, I believe. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna teach freaking headbutt. Oh, this is dangerous. Never mind. I I get so nervous about that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want Christian or Michael to yell at me. I also don't think that song titles help me like this EP at all, because it's like Abundance 10 Edit Bracket 2 R8's FZ20M. It's like, I don't know. This is not music for people, apparently. This is. This is this weird sense of humor coming out. And... Oh, I can capture a, a meta pad. What? How? Oh, oh, I didn't hold it. It's R2. Come on, baby. This is dumb. I will just kill you. He asked for it. That was out of my hands, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tom Waits, apparently, but with a lozenge. That would be a fun one if we all listen to a Tom Waits album. Get some mule variations going. He gets behind the mule in the morning and plows. Which is kind of what I do with Pokemon. Except there's no mule, and it's not the morning. And I'm not behind it. And I'm not Tom Waits. Yeah, this is a weird... This EP was a weird choice because I feel like if you don't care about Aphex Twin or have any, like knowledge of his work or any interest in that type of music then I just I feel like this EP would just wash over you because all the songs are kind of similar in it's like do you like it when the drums go and it sounds like a rip saw or something because if you don't there's nothing here for you be gone Paris I will, I will send out freaking Sephiroth? Okay. Shoot. Okay. 
Bulbasaur instead. Oh no! 